Hi, my name is Joseph from ACS Composite. Today we're going to be talking about lifting the C7 Corvette. So we get a lot of calls on how to properly lift the car, and uh, this is usually when somebody's trying to install side rockers or splitters. It's always nice to get the car off the ground so you can see what you're working on and um, basically install them properly. So uh, we're lifting today a C7 Z06. The procedure is the same for a Stingray, Grand Sport, or ZR1 and very applicable to the C6. So other than a bunch of small details, the two cars are very similar. The tools we need for the task is obviously a jack. So we have a low profile sports car jack. Uh, if you have a standard jack, we'll, we'll discuss that too, but you could do that. Obviously you need some jack stands. We have some six ton jack stands, which are really great. Most people use two ton jack stands, which will do the job. You'll need a wheel chuck, so we wanna lock it. Some wooden blocks, and obviously some pucks to properly be able to lift the car. Biggest concern is obviously damaging the side rocker of the car since the lifting points are there. But we're gonna tackle the task and we'll walk you through it. So we're getting ready to uh, get the car ready so we could lift it. Uh, first step is obviously to have the car on a level ground. We're inside a garage, so this is ideal. We have tons of room around the car. And um, safety is obviously the most important thing. So if you're not comfortable doing this or you have a fear uh, or you're not 100% sure where the steps are, then I, I wouldn't suggest this to do this at home. We're lifting a vehicle that weighs a couple thousand pounds. Um, there is a probability of getting hurt and injury. So obviously you wanna take every precaution you can, but if you're not comfortable, then just walk away and bring it to a service center. Uh, but you know, if you follow the steps and you're careful and uh, you practice, something you should be able to do as a Corvette owner. So the first step is really to get the car ready. Like I said, we're on a level ground, we're in a garage, car should be off. We're gonna go in and um, set the car in gear. For this one, it's a manual. If it's an automatic, we're gonna set it in park. Pull the handbrake. And now we're gonna get ready. So we're ready to start lifting the car. The first step is to lock the front wheels. Uh, we already put car in gear, handbrake on. So the back wheels of the car are locked. Now we're gonna put a chuck in the front. So we're gonna be locking the wheel on the opposite side of where we're lifting the car. The front is freestanding. So for that, we're gonna use a wheel chuck and basically set it in place. Getting ready to start lifting the car. We have our jack, we're gonna slide it in. What's important to know here, ideally, you'd wanna put the jack perpendicular to the car itself. In my case, my jack hits my wall, so I'm gonna angle it so I have enough room and torque to be able to crank it up. Um, the other thing to note, you'll always wanna set your wheels perpendicular to your lifting points. The way the jack works is it hydraulically goes up, and you want the jack to be able to slide forward. We have ceramic here, which is a little annoying. I know I'm gonna get caught on all these little grooves. If you have a cement floor, it's even easier, but you just don't wanna start with the wheel angled. It's always nice to have it angled. Uh, I've positioned my jack pad under my jack puck. I've locked my jack and I'm gonna raise it, rest it, and double check. I wanna make sure that I'm centered my jack itself has a rubber pad and I have an aluminum jack pad on the car. So our lifting points on a C7 are uh, on the side. The car has an aluminum hydroformed rail underneath, one on each side, right inside the rocker. Inside or on the rocker itself, there's two slots. These are actually the slots that the carriers use when they transport the cars from Bowling Green all the way to the dealer. And they'll usually use keys to hold it down and chain it. We're gonna be using those points. So the car is already equipped with pucks. You really wanna make sure you have cups uh, because uh, the jack itself, the diameter of it is larger than the receptacle of the car. And you wanna be able to spread the load over that point. Uh, if you don't, that's where issues rise. You start jacking the car on that point you're gonna break the rocker panel. This rocker panel is glued to the rails of the car and it would be a disaster. You also wanna make sure you get good quality pucks that are 
mounted to the car. Uh, the reasons for that is in case we forget them or if they vibrate off. So what the dealers use is a puck with a T-slot. And these do work well. Um, put them in, you turn them 90 degrees, and they're in position. What we've seen too many times is that customers forget to either bring them to the service center or they leave them on the car. You start driving, they'll vibrate it off, and it could potentially injure somebody behind you. So what we recommend are perfectly mounted pucks. These are basically bolted onto the car. There's no modifications. They're already on there. So basically, you can never forget them home, never forget to take them off. They're part of the car at that point. And what they're doing is they're sticking out and giving you a landing spot for the jack landing. So we're gonna go right ahead and slide the jack in, center it on the puck, and start raising the vehicle. Our jack itself, like we said, we're using a, a racing jack. Uh, it's a very slim jack. It goes right under the C7, so I guess we're spoiled. If you don't have a racing jack and you have a standard jack that we all have at home, uh, basically what you could do is just get some two by 10s or two by eights, drive the car on that, and that's gonna give you an extra inch or two of clearance to then get your jack under it. So I think that's a nice way to cheat to get a couple of inches off the ground and use any jack. I'm getting ready to lift. My wheels are positioned in a way that my jack could slide. This way it's not my car that's sliding, but my jack that, that's accommodating to the lifting of the car. So it always pays to double check. I'm now confident, everything looks secured. I'm gonna lift it. So I'm lifting the car enough to get my jack stands underneath. I'll be using the small ones on this side. We're gonna be setting the jacks under the cradle of the car, so there's two aluminum subframes that hold the suspension. That's where these are gonna go. Before I go under the car, I'm actually gonna put some extra security and put some blocks. So in case something were to slip, at least it has something to rest on. Now I'm using foam blocks, but obviously a piece of wood would do the job. So we've lifted the car with the jack. We've secured uh, or bought some extra insurance by putting some blocks under the wheels. The reason we're doing that is God forbid something were to slip. Um, at least that's something to fall on and the car's not on the ground. I'm gonna go under. We're gonna show you a diagram of the different cradles under the car. There's basically three different combinations. We're gonna use the first ones, which are right about here. So it's easy to notice, it's a checkered aluminum casted piece. We're gonna set the jack, and we're gonna put the block of wood, and the secondary jack's gonna go there. We're gonna do the same thing in the back, which is a little wider, and that's gonna basically support the weight of the car. Great thing with a C7, 50-50 weight distribution, so it's actually pretty amazing how easily you could lift it and uh, how stiff the chassis is. I'm not gonna set the jack in the rear. Now we have the frame, or I should say the cradle, resting on our jacks. I'm gonna slowly lower the car. And at this point, we're gonna take out the wheel blocks. So now we're gonna be lifting this side. Again, uh, jack centered on the jack puck. I'm cheating here because I don't have a lot of room, but I would like to put the jack perpendicular to the car. So we've just set the two jack stands in the front. Um, I still put the blocks in the front, and the reason I'm doing that is if something slips, 
at least they still have that extra four or five inches. I always try to maximize that depending what's around or available. Uh, I wanted to show you guys a little bit how the jack stands are under the cradle. I use the second one, which is a checkered aluminum cross beam on the car. And I'm now gonna lower the car so that I could fully rest it. In the back, we're gonna be doing the same thing. I'm sliding my block and I'm gonna set my other jack symmetrically to the other side. So I usually try, or we should never go under the car without extra safety procedures. I mean, right now we have three jack stands, the jack plus the foam blocks under each wheel. So even if something were to fall, uh, I should be okay. But I try to minimize my time under the car. So I'm always very quick. I know exactly where I'm going, put the jack stand, and uh, basically get out of there. So the car is now officially on four jacks. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is take my jack, set it in the back in the middle of the cradle, basically rest it up against that, just for extra insurance. I'm always trying to find extra ways where I could limit a fall if something were to happen. Um, so let's do that. We've moved the jack to the back of the car and what I'm gonna do now is balance the height of the car and also set the jack here for extra safety. So the car is fully rested on the jack stands. Um, I've actually gone two notches before the end, so I obviously don't want to go to the limit of that jack stand. Okay, we're ready to start working on the car. We're now gonna work to lower the car back on the ground. Uh, obviously we could have just res reversed the steps of lifting the car up. But we're gonna do this a little differently. We're gonna use the back end uh, first to drop that and then work on the front. I've set the jack on the rear cradle right between my two jacks. I've centered it. I'm gonna take the weight off. I've cleared my jacks. and now lift the front of the car and remove the front jacks. So we've completed the procedure of raising the car on four jack stands and finally setting the car back on the ground. There's a few things that we'd like to highlight that are uh, really important. Obviously the first thing is um, safety. So it is a, a dangerous procedure, meaning you're lifting a couple thousand pounds off the air. So you wanna make sure you're using the right equipment and that you don't get hurt. So if at any steps you feel that this is uh, getting out of hand, then just uh, set the car back down and, and, and walk away. Um, it's important to have the right equipment. So the right jack, the right jack stands, pucks on the car, level ground, and just following the steps one, one step at a time. Uh, you don't wanna get hurt. You could get killed. Uh, you could also hurt the car and do several thousand dollars of damage. So it's really important to uh, follow the steps and uh, be safe and have fun modding the car.